Okay, welcome everyone. This is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I'll be showing you some research that I did for one of my Skillshare courses that will demonstrate when the best time is to be selling options. And then also by extension, when the best time is to be buying options as well. Now, as always, before we get started here, and I basically just mentioned this, for those of you who are new to the channel, I just wanna let you know that I do also teach on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two week free trial. All right, so now diving in here, and what I have pulled up already is a one-year price action chart of Nordstrom stock. And so this will be the example stock I'll be using in today's video. And based on where Nordstrom is right now, you can see yesterday during the normal trading hours, Nordstrom had a pretty explosive rally. It went up by almost 11.5% just in one day. And also along with this, you are seeing a spike in implied volatility for Nordstrom. Now, if you've seen a few of my other YouTube videos, I'm sure you've noticed that time and time again, I talk about how important implied volatility is for option selling. Specifically, you want to wait until implied volatility spikes until it increases substantially before you sell options. And again, that's because as implied volatility expands, so do the prices of options. And as with anything that you want to sell, you always want to sell that thing for the highest price possible. So it's moments like this where as an option seller, you'll get the opportunity to sell options for very high prices. So this is the first main component that gets factored into the best time to be selling options. But what about the days until expiration, right? When you come across a situation like this and you want to sell options, well, which expiration cycle should you choose? There's a variety. And this is where the second main component comes into play. And that's in regards to time decay. Now, for those of you who don't know, time decay is simply one aspect of option pricing where simply the passage of time slowly deteriorates the prices of options. So for example, looking at the call options in the June expiration cycle and taking a look at the theta column for all these options, the theta of an option will tell you just how much the price of that option will decay on a daily basis. So if we focus on this 45 strike call option, the theta is negative 0.04. And this simply means that every day that passes, the price of this option will drop by four cents. At least when you just focus on the time decay component of option pricing, there are other components like implied volatility, interest rates, where the stock price is, et cetera, that also get factored into the prices of options. And those other things can offset the time decay component. But if you were to observe the price of an option with all else being constant, if the stock price didn't move, implied volatility stayed the same, interest rates stayed the same, etc., then yes, you would see the price of that option drop by a little bit every single day by the amount shown with theta. Now, this is quoted on a per share basis, and options are tied to 100 shares per contract. So in reality, you have to multiply this number by 100, right? Because if I were to sell this contract, I would not actually sell it for only $1 and maybe 70 cents. Again, multiplying by 100, I would actually sell this option for about $170. So ultimately, every day that passes, the price of this option is going to drop by $4 in total. And so as I'm sure you can imagine, as an option seller, this is a very, very advantageous thing, right? The whole point of selling an option is to either have it expire worthless, so you get to keep the full premium that you sold the contract for, or so that you can eventually buy the contract back for a lower price. If I sell this contract today for 170 bucks, and then sometime down the road, I buy it back for only 70 bucks, then I make the difference as profit, which would be $100. That would be my profit. So having this built in component of option pricing, which just naturally reduces the prices of options, then like I said, time decay really is one of your best friends as an option seller. But again, this still begs the question of, which expiration cycle should I be choosing when selling options? Because time decay will affect options in different expiration cycles in different ways. And so now this is where my research comes in. So if I come over here, this is basically a spreadsheet calculator that based on some inputs, I can actually calculate the theoretical price for any option. 
In this case, I have set up for a call option. So let me explain how this works exactly. And we'll come back to the charts real quick. And so first take note that Nordstrom stock is trading right now, at least based on the closing price, at $40.95. Moreover, the implied volatility for this stock right now is at 79%, 79.17% to be exact. And given that Nordstrom had such a huge rally yesterday, perhaps now I want to fade this move. Basically, I would be bearish on Nordstrom stock at this point. Now that is just my style of options trading. When stocks go up in a very significant amount, I typically like to get bearish because stocks do eventually come back down. So in this case, like I was saying, perhaps if I came across Nordstrom and I saw this spike in implied volatility and this huge increase in the stock price, perhaps now I want to sell an out of the money call option. And let's say for the sake of example, I want to sell the 45 strike call option so that I still give myself some nice room if Nordstrom continues this rally come the next trading day, but also of course, if Nordstrom does reverse and go back down, then I will make a nice profit on that. So now coming back to our spreadsheet, I've already gone ahead and inputted those parameters into this input table here. The current stock price is $40.95. The strike of the call option I want to sell is $45. The implied volatility for Nordstrom is 79%. And I also did a brief lookup at the short-term treasury rates to get an idea of what the short-term risk-free rate is right now. And it's about 0.05% for a one-year treasury note at this time. But this is pretty much irrelevant for this video. I simply need it for these calculations over here. And so now coming over here to this table, and don't worry about these two columns in the middle. These are simply intermediate calculations. So just focus on this DTE column and the corresponding call price, right? So what this is doing is it's calculating the theoretical price for that call option, that 45 strike call option, based on where Nordstrom stock is right now and based on the implied volatility for Nordstrom for any number of days until the expiration date. So for example, focusing on this first row, the theoretical price for a call option on Nordstrom stock that expires in 365 days, again based on these parameters here, the theoretical price for that call option would be $11.27. And again, this is also quoting it on a per share basis. So in reality, multiplying this by 100, the total price for this contract would be $1,127. And then for the same exact call option, but expiring 364 days from today, one day less, the theoretical price for that call option would be $11.25, two cents less than the first one. And so this difference in prices here is the result of time decay, right? Like I said, every day that passes, time decay will slowly deteriorate the value of options. And so in this case here, after the passage of one day, time decay reduced the value of this call option by two cents, and then so on and so forth, all the way down the list to zero days until expiration. And in case you're wondering here, all these calculations are based on the Black-Scholes option pricing model, right? All this very complicated mathematical stuff down here. Right, so you can actually use these equations to figure out the theoretical price for a call option or a put option. And so again, all this math is essentially calculated behind the scenes in this spreadsheet here. And so finally now, I can take this data, specifically the days to expiration column and the corresponding prices, and plot this on a graph. And here's the graph that I'm referring to. And so on the x-axis here, we have the days to expiration, starting from 365 days, one year, going all the way down to expiration day. And then on the y-axis here, this shows you the price of the corresponding call option for each one of these days until expiration. So again, going back to the call option that expires in one year from today, and then going up to the blue curve here, boom, right there you can see the value is $11.27. That is the theoretical price for the call option, which expires in 365 days. And now I'm sure you can notice this curve here for most of the time has a pretty steady linear slope downward, but eventually as you get close to expiration, the curve starts to steepen at a faster and faster rate. So this curve here shows you the effects of time decay on this call option in that yes, every single day that passage, the price of an option will decrease, but in particular, when you get close to the expiration day, time decay accelerates. 
it starts to eat away at the value of options faster and faster and faster. And specifically, if I zoom in a bit more, it's right around 45 days or so that time decay really starts to speed up. So what this means is if I did want to go ahead and sell that call option on Nordstrom, I would want to pick an expiration cycle around 45 days until expiration. Now, one thing I need to explain further is why should I choose an expiration cycle at the very beginning of this rapid increase in time decay? Would it not be better to sell an option maybe with only 21 days left to go or eight days left to go when time decay is accelerating the most? And the problem with this, the problem with selling options in my view with very little time left to go until expiration is you're not gonna be collecting enough credit for those options to justify the risk. Right now where my cursor is, you can see the value of the 45 strike call option, which expires in nine days, only has a value of 69 cents. Or again, multiplying by 100, $69. That's not a lot of credit for selling that naked call option and taking on undefined risk. Whereas if I sell an option with around 45 days left to go, somewhere around this point, I could sell this call option here for just under $300. So in my view, collecting $300 justifies the undefined risk aspect of selling a naked call option a lot more. Now, yes, I would be in this trade potentially for a lot longer. There are 45 days left to go until expiration as opposed to nine days. But there is a thing called gamma risk that you also want to be careful of when you get very close to expiration. And I do also have a separate YouTube video on that topic. I'll post a card above linking to it so you can watch it later. But gamma risk is the main reason why I do not want to sell options very, very close to the expiration day. But bottom line, the key takeaway here is when it comes to selling options, you first want to make sure that imply volatility is elevated. And specifically, if you look at the IV rank and IV percentile of the stock, I would say in most cases, you want to look for stocks where the IV rank is above 30% and the IV percentile is above 50%. So in this case, Nordstrom does fall a bit short on the IV percentile portion of my criteria. But given that this is still a very, very apparent spike in implied volatility, I would not mind making a small exception to the rule and still selling options on the stock here. So again, ideally, look for a stock where the IV rank is above 30 and the IV percentile is above 50 or very close to those numbers. And then in terms of the expiration cycle, Look for an expiration cycle around 45 days until expiration. And I would say any expiration cycle between 30 and 60 days is fair game. Ideally, you want to be around 45, but of course, it's not going to be possible to pick a cycle with exactly 45 days left to go. So again, any cycle between 30 and 60 days left to go until expiration is fair game. So for Nordstrom here, I could choose these weekly expiration cycles. This one expires in 41 days, this one in 48 days, but oftentimes weekly expiration cycles have very bad liquidity, which is definitely the case here. You can see under both volume and open interest for these contracts, it's basically zero across the board. Almost no one is trading these options. So that's why I usually stick with the monthly expiration cycles. You'll find that the monthly cycles have the best liquidity or the most people trading those options. So in that case, I could choose either the June 18th cycle with 34 days left to go, or maybe, just maybe, the July 16th cycle with 62 days left to go. And for me, 62 days is a bit too far. So as a result, I would go with the June cycle. And so you can see here, the 45 strike call option. And like I showed you earlier, I could sell this one now for about $175 maybe, somewhere around there. And I would say that's pretty adequate compensation for the risk I'm taking here. And so finally, before wrapping up, I know this video focused mostly on selling options. And that's just because that's what I do. But you can also take the opposite of everything here to figure out when is the best time to be potentially buying options. Now, I don't recommend you buy options at all because time decay will work against you. And so will imply volatility in most cases. But essentially, coming back to our spreadsheet here, since time decay, as I said, works against you as an option buyer, then if you did want to buy an option, you would want to do so with much more time baked in until the expiration date because options way out here are affected by time decay a lot less, right? So potentially buying options with maybe 90 days left to go or 100 or more, that would be your best course of action. 
Time decay will still be working against you each passing day, but at least the effects of that time decay will not be nearly as severe as if you're buying options with very little time left to go until expiration. And then in regards to implied volatility, it's again just the opposite. Instead of a spike in implied volatility and therefore making options expensive, you want to wait for a crush in implied volatility, which therefore makes options cheap. So if you can wait for times like this and buy some very cheap options with a lot of time left to go until the expiration date, that's going to give you the best chance of success. And again, if you do want to see this kind of information on a much more in-depth level, because there are a lot more scenarios with buying or selling in the money options or at the money options or out of the money options, right? Time decay and apply volatility will affect all those different kinds of options differently. So again, if you want to see the full, full picture of how all this works, then definitely check out my Skillshare course. I have a link to it in the description of this video. And the course is called Options Trading, The Best Time to Trade Options. And so with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you've got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out those Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.